And I have been, I told to you that I am a psychotherapist. And I come across a very common question. <laughs> that I don't feel good. I feel bad. My question, the first question to each other is, do you want to be bad? I am doing anything to feel bad. The person says, I want, I do everything to feel good, but I do not know what happens, I feel bad. There are other people who come to me and complain that people don't understand. I want to be good today and they misunderstand me. I don't know sir, what goes wrong with me. And you got to smile in it. I tell my question to such individuals is, do you understand yourself? Oh, that is a million dollars. In this world, I have seen not anybody who wants to become unhappy, but most of us are happy. Nobody wants to get stressed out, but most of us are stressed out. We want us to be understood and most of us say, I misunderstood. A great misery of this time. A great, great misery of this time. Because all our efforts seem to be going in vain. Going with. And there seems a sort of confusion, a dilemma. As a psychotherapist, a lady comes to me and tells me, sir, all my misery will be over if you can save my husband. Mother comes to me and tells me, if you could really control my child and counsel my child, I might, my life will be better. And I find one common thing. That everybody wants to be working on the consequence. The result, the outcome. And there seems to be an awareness about the stimuli, the cause, the reason. And friends, today I am going to take some time, I will not more than 18 minutes, to explore this phenomena, what goes wrong with me. And if something is going wrong with me, let me assure you, friends, the reason lies inside me. And if we really dare to look inside, perhaps we can change the results which are coming on us without our knowledge, we call it unconscious. This is precisely the theme of my tool's interaction with you, friends. Incidentally, this psychotherapy is a very bigger habit. We do conduct courses on stress management, and my experience is we create a stress then can be managed. I don't know if I am going to help you explore yourself, but one thing is certain. It is always good to have confusion than no confusion. And I believe that confusion can lead to the clarity if you develop curiosity. So my purpose of today is some 15 20 minutes might not now offer this. To at least create a confusion if not curiosity. And I'll be happy if you can have curiosity and God bless you if you can know the answer for this. And when we really take our journey for the self exploration, the first question comes on which the whole spirituality and most of the religions are working. And the first and the best and the most important question which comes to any mind who am I? Yes, who am I? Very difficult question. If you ask me who am I, I will say I am a both psychotherapist. But is it me? Maybe my parents gave me this name and the psychotherapist in my profession, does it really explain who am I? All the non-living things, take iron, glass, plastic, paper, clothes. If you want to understand them, analyze them, how would it be? Break it. To what extent? Break it to the extent you can do. Fine. So if we start really breaking those non-living things, we would create a powder of it perhaps, the powder of iron, the powder of gold, the powder of plastic, the powder of glass. If we further break this up, if we further break this up, maybe we'll go to the tiniest, the smallest part of Call it atom, molecules, I do not know. Yeah, perhaps atom. If you further take the atom, oh, there comes the reality. 
all these things which were non-living have the same composition electrons, protons, neutrons. And the property of this material is decided by the combination of these three basic elements. So, iron has its own combination of electron, proton, neutron. Gold has its own. Plutonium, thorium has its own. Glass and the plastic and the paper will have its own. And if we could know the art of changing this combination, maybe we can turn iron into the gold and maybe gold into the plutonium, thorium or whatever. If this holds true for the non-living things, what could be the living things? Analysis. Can they be broken? Yeah, they can be broken. And if you dare to do it, I don't know how, maybe some other stations, you will come up three basic components in any living entity. It's the energy, consciousness and the wisdom. Decide the property of this living entity. And I call myself human being. Oh, yeah. So it has to have some combination of this energy wisdom. Something could be plant, something could be animal. They would have their own energy, consciousness and wisdom. And this energy, consciousness and wisdom goes to the tiniest, smallest, microorganism living cell only. Take a cell of brain, take a cell of heart, take another cell of lung, one more of kidney, they will look the same. But each of these cells will have different energy, consciousness, wisdom formula. The brain cell works the function of a brain and the lung cell does the function of the lung. We call them cellular memories. The wisdom of that cell and brain, the exploration journey really has to work on these three dimensions of energy, consciousness and wisdom. I am standing in front of you, talking to you and using my energy. This I-ness in me, me, I am Prabodh, this is my body, this I-ness, my-ness is a part of my consciousness. And maybe whatever I am talking sounds wise to you. And if it doesn't, it is my problem. If I have to really work on this to go further on the self-exploration, Maybe I have to work on this triangle of energy, consciousness and wisdom. If I am working on the energy component of my existence, they call it karma yoga. Working on the activity front. If it is on the consciousness, it is the bhakti yoga. And if it is the wisdom, it is the jnana yoga. So this yoga is how it approaches how to really explore yourself go into the detail and understand. There could be another way of looking at this, who am I? And going and seeing as to what are the dimensions of our physical existence. And they look like this. I have a body in front of you, supposed to have a mind inside, and now a lot of emotions. And people say that this cat has a soul to that. Yeah. How do I explain this? Maybe I will take recourse to some picture and understand what is it. In this picture, you will find the horses, the chariot, the chariot here, and the owner. These horses are giving energy. And all our desires, our emotions seem to give us energy. So we can equate our emotions to the horses in this picture. And somebody has to control this energy. So there is another entity called mind, seems to, should be rather, controlling this energy component. The chariot, the physical part of it, is naturally our body. And the person who is occupying that chariot is the owner unfortunately driven by the horses and not controlled by the charioteers. And this is the story of our misery today, which people do come and visit me and ask me, why do I not get understood? Why the misery is come to me in spite of the fact that I want to be happy? I am trying more and more frustrated I am 
because he is driven by horses and not by the desires of the soul which is sitting inside. What we are trying to do is to work on the reflection than on the real body. If my reflection shows some blood on my face, however hard I try to cleanse the mirror, the thing won't go away. What I need to do is to wash my face and the reflection in the mirror will automatically go. The self explores in the journey to go inside to find the reason and not to find the reason outside. The stimuli creates a response is funny, but stimuli generates the response and there is a CPU processing unit in between. So how this stimuli is understood, how this stimuli is processed, how it is decoded and what is decided would create a response. And if I want to get a different response, I should not be aiming at changing the stimuli, but to change the processing. If the processing is right, the performance has to be okay. If the performance is wrong, check up the process. And this self-exploration is the process of checking up your processes. How do I go inside in a million dollar question? Yeah million of questions. I thought I am body, but then in spirituality there are various bodies. The physical body which you are seeing right now, standing as Prabhu in front of you, is the Antamaya Kosha, the physical body. But this physical body is also connected to the etheric body or Pranamaya Kosha. Yeah, I hope Pran is all of us are. And there is a Pranavayu in the environment. And we hear it morning of Ramdeva Baba Ji and Ramdeva Baba Ji are working to the Pranayam to strengthen the Pranashat. And what we need to do and work on is the Pranavayu. I am alive because I am breathing. The moment I stop breathing, not exactly the moment, after some time I stop breathing, some people might hold it for a while, that is what happens. So basically the journey of our life begins from the first place and goes to the last place, last place. And what is this really connecting us is to the Pranamaya Kosha. In this Kosha, in this body, you feel the weightlessness, the physical existence of your whatever, it gets lost. And this is something which you have to experience. This cannot be explained in the word. Another body called the Manumaya Kosha. All the living entities are thinking, feeling. If I am feeling, I am thinking, certainly I am alive. On the death moment or after my day, I am going to stop feeling and thinking. The body can be burnt or buried. Nothing happens to me. Prior to this, I will feel a lot of things. Because my Manumaya Kosha, the astral body, is working. Every day, rather every night, we undertake the journey on this astral body during a dream state, but it is an unguided journey. We do not know where to wander. Our unconscious mind takes it. Unconscious mind decides. This astral body can transcend the space and time dimension. It can go anywhere, anytime, back or forth. If we can really work on this, go subtle, deeper, to the meditative states, we can concentrate and really connect to the astral body also, wherein the feelings of gravitation, moment, they start happening to you. Again, this is an experiential process. You cannot learn from moment, I am contributing to that. I am inviting what is happening to me, is the belief. How do you understand this? Incidentally, we in psychology believe that hardly 10 percent of the mind is known. We call it conscious mind. Less than that. Keep up the eye first. More than 90 percent is unconscious. And the causal body is about connecting to that unconsciousness of our past. I do not know whether you remember the first day at school. 
Post office, we don't know. Doesn't mean we're not from the school on the first day. A lot of things are deeply buried in your unconscious mind. And the other body takes you back. The technique is called the regression technique, the life regression technique, Raj Pixel Jamaka and all those things. We are trying to work out the further body connection affecting their present body, physical body. The journey will go further. The Anandamaya approach is called the real swaru of our that is the spiritual body. We believe at times that we are the human being and a lot of people say who have a spiritual path, they want to have the spiritual experience. But as you really start fathoming the depth of these bodies and start exploring yourself, what you come to realize is that you are not human being wanting to have the spiritual experience, but you are the spiritual existence wanting to have the human body. Understand what I am saying right now. You are not the human body wanting to have the spiritual experience, but you are the spiritual body wanting to have the human experience and that is the state of Satchit Ananda. They say the blissful calm. There is the opposite of Sukha or the Dukha, but there is no opposite of Ananda. There is no opposite of Ananda. If we could reach there, oh, that is what should happen. And the self-explanation is a journey from this physical body, Anandamaya Kosha, to the spiritual body, Anandamaya Kosha. We believe that our education should master. Yeah, we are masters. I am a master of statistics, master of business administration, lot of masters I have attached to myself. But friends, there are two types, and external and peripheral. The purpose of education is not to master the contents of the physical world. Mastering one subject is good enough, but unless you master yourself, it is all useless, futile. And the purpose of this self-exploration, the journey inside, is to master yourself. And you should experience that Aham Brahmasmi and that I am that Tattvamasmi. If we could really experience that, if we could really understand this, that I am the creator of all my... Oh, that is awakening. That is insight. And in that state of insight, the knowledge liberates. The knowledge removes ignorance. In this formal education, what I really observe is more the qualification, more is the arrogance, more is the isolation, more is the hostility, more is the aggression, more is the separation, more are the miseries. Friends, on this occasion, I thank Ted to invite me, having invited me to speak to you. And I recommend that take up the journey of self-exploration inside you. If you go inside, oh, the light will come, the enlightenment will happen, the delight will happen, and somebody like this would come out of your physical body. This is good time. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you once again for giving me an opportunity.